Okay. Well, as you can see, this table's getting pretty crowded, but the ET8 is off to the side, the generator box is off to the side. I just assembled the HM1, and uh, I did not order the base that they offered with it, because I uh, honestly got uh, distracted and forgot to watch and purchase it. Uh, so I have that on order, but since the engine is assembled, uh, I thought I would build a little makeshift base for it for now. Uh, and that means uh, I'm going to use one of these sticks that I picked up at, uh, I think, the Sycamore, Illinois show. There was a fellow with a small sawmill that I got these at. Uh, and I've stained them while they were out and about, but uh, just going to make a quick skid to put the HM1 on and to do that we'll just turn it upside down and going to make a couple quick and dirty cross members here because I did measure these screws and they're almost as long as these skids are so if I make a couple quick and dirty cross members for this then I'll be able to uh, then I'll be certain that it's tall enough because this engine does have to be mounted on something, skids, or whatever, or it, uh, the flywheels don't have any clearance from the base, so, alright, now that I've done my eyeball measuring there, I can put the engine right side up and... quick and dirty cross members and then um, I don't want to I'm going to make one more cut in this and so to try and cut it straight in half so I guess time to
All right. So, I butchered up this uh, little skid, um, and I ordered the official one from uh, Engine DIY. I just realized that um, I took and scuffed the paint on the corner of the base here, but that's the spot I can't get a screw in very easily, so I need to scuff the paint on a different corner, or on the other corner here, so that I know I have a good spot for my ground ring. So I'm going to put my ground ring on. There we go. There we go. All right. So I have the yellow ignition module, the spare one, and I'm going to put this on the skid and wire up this temporary ignition module while I wait for the kit to arrive. It's got the base and the um, other ignition module and the fuel tank. So I scuffed that paint to make sure this ground wire works and when I get the official module and everything I'm going to make the wiring look nice, but for now, we'll just test it with this white yellow ignition module and this goofy base. Screwdriver, or I mean, I don't know why I said screwdriver, I meant spark plug here. And I hmm. need to find a way to set this here so I can do the timing. Of course, this yellow ignition module doesn't have a switch built on it, so I'll turn this around to that side. And I didn't grab a spark plug boot. Luckily. The ET8 is just off frame. So you just poke that boot on there. module in all right 
Now. Yeah, okay, so I'm turning this the right way. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Hmm. All right. Let me unplug this. So the notch and the pulley for the rope pulls that way so it's gonna it should spin this way however the cam So that's bottom dead center, exhaust, and this is where it should be falling entirely off. Because if this worked like the engine more, it would half push the rod like that, and then at bottom dead center. Should be an intake. Compression. Oh, okay, so it breaks the. Okay, got it. So maybe this ignition module will not. Let's see. So, uh, Right, so this is not timed the way the engine more is. Because instead of with the engine more, where it pushes the push rod halfway to make the contact and trigger the spark, this one. holds the push rod in this location and then it's supposed to drop the push rod to open these contacts which is firing a top dead center on this setup. So yep. Uh well 
correction, it's firing at... Well, that was still charged. Uh, it's firing right there, which is 5 or 10 degrees before top dead center, which should be fine. Oh yeah, okay, so this, you can see that contact is held open when the push rod is in the resting position, and then when it retracts the, then it closes the contact. Okay. So, to change the timing on this, this uh, stationary contact here would have to just gently bend forward or backward to get it to, yeah, because I don't see there's a, I don't see a slide mechanism for sliding the whole mechanism for, or the whole trigger forward and backward. Okay, so this is slightly different than the Engimore. Um, which is kind of cool. So, all right. Well, we know the ignition is pretty much on time. So, I guess the next thing is to go out to the garage and test this, and see if we can make it run. Um, I don't have the fuel tank accessory, of course, but I've got a few fuel tanks around, so I'll just hook one up and see if it goes.